I'm Mick Fanning, and this is my life. I was born in the western suburbs of Sydney, a place called Penrith, the youngest of five kids. The beach was a two hour drive away. Mum would load us in the red Datsun, radio blasting old rock songs and get us down the coast. We didn't have much, but we didn't need much. We had each other and that was heaps. With three older brothers, competition was a part of life. We fought for everything, food, toys and eventually waves. I think that's where my competitive nature comes from now. My parents split when I was three and we moved north. Hard times made it a little easier because we had the beach. My big brother started surfing and as annoying little siblings do, I followed them. My competitiveness really started to take hold when I hit double digits. Soccer, running, school, cricket, rugby league. The game didn't matter, I loved it all, but surfing was different. I got a buzz from surfing I couldn't get from anything else. Life was great and got even better when mum took a job on the Gold Coast. The place is awesome. I started competing in pro junior events and was getting results. Big contracts started coming my way and life was as good as it gets for a 16 year old. I wrote out a list of goals on a piece of paper and stuck it to my wall above my bed. Win a pro junior, win a QS, make the tour, win a CT event, become world champion. My older brother Sean had the same goals and it bound us. We dreamed of making the tour together. He encouraged me and looked out for me. He was my hero. Sean was just 20 when he died in a car accident. We were out at a party but got split up. I walked home. Sean jumped in a car with friends. On the walk home, police picked me up and told me Sean was gone. It was now my burden to share the news with the family. I locked myself in a room and didn't leave for a week. When I finally got myself together, my motivation to achieve my goals went into hyperdrive. I wanted to honour my brother by fulfilling our dream. Here goes Fanning. Winning Bells as a wild card in 2001 against my childhood idol, Denny Wills, was surreal. I dedicated the win to Sean. The year I started to tick things off from the list on my bedroom wall from all those years ago. I won the World Qualifying Series and got my ticket to the championship tour. Suddenly I was travelling the world and surfing against the best. Kelly Slater, Mark Ocalupo, Andy Owens, Shane Doran, Rob Machado, Taylor Knox and the rest of the world. I finished fifth in my first season, then went to fourth. Mathematically, I was in title contention, but honestly, I was nowhere near it. I had the desire, but not the dedication. I was a world champ material. A career-threatening injury made me realise that. I was told I might never ever get back to my best. I'd taken my good health and my position to potentially win a world title for granted. Even before the injury, I had a weakness in my surfing and my attitude. Something had to change. During my rehab, I began to understand my body and myself better than ever. I wanted to be a world champion. I became obsessed with the goal. 2007 was the year it all came together. On the day I won my first world title in Brazil, there was a dolphin out there in the lineup. It wasn't part of a pod, it was just a single dolphin cruising around solo and kept popping up during my heats. I felt the presence of my brother, Sean. That day I became the first Australian to win a world title since Oki eight years earlier. The greatest of all time, Kelly Slater handed me the title trophy. It was the pinnacle of my career and I got to dedicate it to my brother. In 2009, I locked horns with my best mate, Joel Parkinson, for the title race. I won a second world title, but it took its toll on me. I was winning, but it felt like my relationships and friendships were suffering. The third world title in 2013 was more fun. I could flick the switch and get in competitive mode, but now I could zone out and enjoy the world around me. Competition became a game and it took the pressure off and started a solid run for me. I was in contention again for a few years and then in 2015 felt like another world title year was there. At J-Bay I felt unbeatable and going into the second half of the year, I had this as my event to charge on ahead of the ratings. That was when old mate in the grey suit popped up and in a matter of seconds altered the course of my life and gave me perspective I'd never had before. Competition points didn't mean that much. Leaving was a priority. But a big sigh of relief seeing Fanning in one piece. Dealing with an outrageous level of public and media interest along the way, I went into the final event of the Pipe Masters leading the world title race. Everything felt right. A fourth world title was right there. On the day I was all set to go down at Pipe, I woke early, too early, by a knock on my door. My beautiful mum standing there, tears in her eyes and clearly hurting. I knew it was bad. 
She told me my eldest brother Pete had just passed away. I was so thankful I caught up with Pete just a couple of months before that final event. He rarely revealed his feelings, but he told me his favourite thing to do was watch me compete. He told me he was proud of me and that he loved me. The morning I found out he had passed away, friends were comforting me and telling me I didn't have to go out if I wasn't up to it. I knew what Pete would want. To win the world title, I had to place ahead of Adrian D'Souza. I was up for the challenge, but had to overcome the two greatest pipe surfers of all time in Kelly Slater and John John Florence to stay in contention. The waves were firing, we all had excellent rides. Looking back on my career now, I think that heat with John and Kelly was the pinnacle for me. Kelly is the greatest of all time, and John is without question the best surfer in the world right now. That heat win was the hardest and most satisfying of my career and no heat from then on could match its insignificance or my desire to win. It's the moment I'm most proud of in my career and the ultimate dedication to my big brother. I won the heat, but lost the title to Adriano. Losing the title didn't hurt. At the end of the day, I only had Pete in my thoughts. The perspective experience from the shark incident was nothing compared to losing a brother on the eve of a world title showdown. After the heat, I'd discovered all my best friends from home had heard the news about Pete and flew over to support me. I'd lost, but realised in life I was winning. Before the 2016 season kicked off, I knew I didn't want to compete, but wasn't entirely sure I wanted to retire for good. I surfed in five events to keep a spot for 2017 and buy some time to consider my next move. For over 20 years, my schedule had been dictated by event dates and locations. Now I could go wherever I wanted explore new places, experiencing new things. The only event I really focused on in 2016 was J-Bay. I had so many good memories of the place and felt like I had unfinished business because the final of 2015 was canned. The victory over John John in the final is what got me thinking about having another shot at the tour. I didn't want to be sitting around in 10 years time wondering if I had retired too early. I signed up for 2017, and I'm glad I did. I realised I wasn't really fixated on the title, but got so much joy out of seeing other people win like Owen, Julian, and Wilco. I saw glimpses of the future in performances from John John and Philippe. And he's gonna go to the air again. <laughs> I saw the kind of hunger and determination it takes to get yourself into title contention from Medina. I don't have that drive for competition anymore. Between the world title victories, there are other huge moments, big event wins, memorable heats and crazy adventures and monumental mistakes. One thing I'm constantly asked about the media is, do I have any regrets? Sure, there's things I've done that I'm not proud of, but I wouldn't change anything. I'd only regret those mistakes if I hadn't learned from them. You might be wondering, what's he gonna do now? Well, it's probably no surprise to anyone, but I'm gonna go surfing as much as I can to as many new places as I can find. I want to experiment with different equipment and enjoy a fresh approach. But the main goal is one I've been working on for a while. That is to be a better person, a reliable friend, a loving son and brother, and raise awareness for the challenges facing our environment. I reckon that will keep me pretty busy. I want to thank everyone that's been part of this trip so far, and I can't wait to see where this new road takes me. I'm Mick Fanning, and this is my life. I was born in the western suburbs of Sydney, a place called Penrith, the youngest of five kids. The beach was a two-hour drive away. Mum would load us in the red Datsun, radio blasting old rock songs, and get us down the coast. We didn't have much, but we didn't need much.